Hello? No. I see no ladies here, so just a gentleman of the press. No. Oh, I'm talking about uh, members. Oh, there are ladies also. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, uh, welcome to our the Muse Center. Um, we have here members of parliament from Azimio who are presenting various other political parties in the Azimio uh, One Kenya Coalition. As you know, uh, Azimio One Kenya Coalition had a retreat with members of parliament at uh, Stony Athi Lodge uh, for the last two days. In which time there was extensive consultations about several issues that uh, are current in our country. Following those deliberations, um, we now have a statement today that we are going to issue, uh, which uh, reflects the deliberations that have taken place uh, among uh, leadership of uh, the new the Omoja One Kenya Coalition. That statement is going to be read by the party leader of Waipa Democratic Movement, Honorable Stephen Kalonzo Musioka. Thank you so much, uh, uh, brother. Yone Boraila Amolo Dinga is our coalition leader. Um, members are still probably trying to come from Tony Adi. I want to thank the members who have already managed. Yone Waluke, you can put up your hand. Yone Bo Mishiboko. Yone Bo Wario. Yone Bo Eno Kwambua. Yone Bo Nyamai Recho. Yone Kina. Yone Bo Apikadir. Batera, Kamene, Joyce, Anabo Eddie, Senator Eddie, Gori, Senator Kajuang, and Donabo Eribai, Tana River, Donabo Rama. So, Senator Sosi just come in uh, behind Senator Ombua. So, um, one more. Ah. Nabi Nambuera. Thank you, Nabi. I remember you yesterday. Hey, when you stood in a point of order. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm therefore going to read the resolutions of the Azimio La Moja One Kenya Coalition Party Parliamentary Group Meeting, which was held yesterday and today. It comes to an end, 16th and 17th of September 2022. The Azumeo La Moja One Kenya Coalition Party has successfully concluded a two-day parliamentary group meeting in Machakos County. In the meeting, the parliamentary group took stock of the state of the nation and developed its plan for the 13th parliament. From the outset, we wish to associate ourselves fully with the remarks of the Right Honorable Raila Odinga when he opened the meeting. The Right Honorable Odinga's speech has brought to the fore very pertinent issues that should form the basis of serious national discourse going forward. For the avoidance of doubt, Azumio Oka is legally and legitimately the majority coalition in the National Assembly. This is not a matter for determination by any individual or office, it is simple arithmetic. And so to settle this matter and put the record straight once and for all, members of parliament belonging to the Azumeo Oka coalition have been properly advised to take up majority roles and responsibilities in and out of the National Assembly Chamber. The Ruto administration has started off on the wrong footing on almost every front. Most painful to the ordinary Kenyan 
is the declaration that Kenya Kwanza will not subsidize consumption but will channel subsidies to production. What a quick about turn against the ordinary Kenyan struggling to afford a basic meal a day. A government that can uh, feed our people has no business being in office. The import of this statement by the Ruto administration is that this government is committed to collecting taxes from the suffering masses to give a lifeline to big manufacturers of food and non-food items. The question to ask is, who are these producers going to be selling their products to since the ordinary Kenyan can hardly afford a simple meal? Why has the Asla quote-unquote narrative disappeared so soon? In a blatant but ill-advised move to placate the judiciary and further weaken the legislature, the president has done the unthinkable. He has purported to allocate the judiciary some token funds to ostensibly move forward the agenda of an independent institution. This is a mockery of the basic intelligence of consumers of justice and must be seen for what it is. Financial and operational autonomy of the judiciary cannot and will not be guaranteed by tokenism. It can only be assured by creating an environment that guarantees clear separation of powers between the three arms of government. And whereas funds are necessary for effective dispensation of justice, it is not the business of a president acting in isolation to allocate funds to the judiciary. Appropriation of funds to public institutions is a constitutional mandate of parliament. The president must tame his appetite for throwing money at institutions to buy friendship. He must keep up the judiciary and let the legislature do its work. As part of the Ruto administration's vindictive agenda, plans have already been initiated to hound out of office the four IABC commissioners, namely Juliana Charera, Francis Wanderi, Irene Masit, and Justice Nyangaya, plus a deputy CEO, very hard working Madam Ruth Kulundu, for refusing to toe the line. We totally condemn this brazen act of witch hunt and demand that the president and his agents leave those officers alone. On our part, we commit to do whatever it takes to protect those officers from any attempts to infringe their basic rights. We have noted several cases of disproportionate allocation of nomination slots for MCAs to political parties across the country. For instance, in Tana River County, but Kenya won one MCA uh, seat and was allocated one nomination slot. In the same county, Wiper Democratic <laughs> Movement won two MCA slots but was not allocated any nomination slot. Similar cases clearly Actually, take a seat. Yeah. So, let our brother take a seat. He's been reproved, 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 Very well. I will repeat, huh? We have noted several cases of disproportionate allocation of nomination slots for MCAs to political parties across the country. For instance, in Tana River County, Port Kenya won one MCA seat and was allocated one nomination slot. In the same county, Wiper Democratic Movement won two MCA slots but was not allocated any nomination slot. And I think this list is, is, is growing by the day. We have seen cases of... Uh, uh, people without the necessary qualification. So it's in the media today. Uh, some cooks are given positions. Uh, but I think it is important we, we also, whereas our cooks are very important, 
they give us food but i think that it's a, it's, a, it's 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 good to allow them to pursue that line so one can become a chef and even get international jobs but to give them legislative responsibility i think is diverting their strong uh, attributes similar cases clearly designed to disadvantage as meo oka abound across the country and yeah, I can also mention that uh, Jubilee in the Senate won five, five slots and they were given one nomination slot. Uh, and if you are to round up a 0 0.7, I'm told they are taking this matter elsewhere in court, which is appropriate. Um, I think UDM had, 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 had two. They are two and they got a slot. So you wonder what is really happening with IBC, is it, is it business as usual? Several attempts to have dialogue with the IBC to resolve these issues have not been successful. We demand that the IBC moves the speed to correct those anomalies, failure to which we shall be forced to take our own action to have the situation remedied. We have heard with consternation pronouncements from the Buddha Brigade calling on the DCI to keep off public offices and retreat <laughs> to their headquarters. Apart from interfering with the independence of the National Police Service, we take such edicts to mean the room, in a, room is now being officially created for looting of public resources to go on without hindrance. We demand the immediate retraction of those backward orders and reiterate our resolve to defend the independence of the police and all other independent institutions. We have also noted with concern the return of roadside declarations of official channel of espousing government policy. This is happening even before a cabinet that meets the dictates of the constitution is in place. This should worry every well-meaning Kenyan. Finally, let it be known to all and sundry, the leaders in Azumio Oka are not interested in any jobs whatsoever from the executive. We already have a, a lot of work to do, as we have demonstrated even this afternoon, keeping the executive under check. And truth be told, the insinuation from a section of Kenya Kwanzaa leadership the legislators allied to them are in government any more than those allied to Azumio Oka is a demonstration of lack of understanding of the basic principles of Constitution 2010 on their part. The legislature is an arm of government and all legislators have a constitutional mandate to oversight the executive arm of government. In conclusion, we now have the pleasure to unveil the leaders of Azumeo La Moja One Kenya Coalition Party in the 13th Parliament. At the level of the National Assembly, we announce the leader of majority as Honorable Opio Wandai. We announce Deputy Leader of Majority, Honorable Robert Mbui. The Chief Whip, Honorable Junet Mohammed. Deputy Chief Minority Whip, Honorable Sabina Chege. At the Senate, because we recognize we are down by only one senator, the leader of minority is Honorable Stuart Mazayo, Senator for Kilifi, and Deputy Leader of Minority, Honorable Ino Kumbua. Chief Minority Whip, Honorable Fatuma Dulo, Senator for Isiolo, and the Deputy Chief Minority Whip, Honorable Edwin Sifuna. Thank you. May God bless Kenya. Actually, in how you do? Thank you.